Luminzia now lets you record anything as a Photoshop action. This lets you automate your luminosity masking workflows or assign shortcut keys or buttons from a Wacom tablet or Stream Deck to your favorite features. Let's say you have a series of images that all need some shadow adjustments to be pushed a bit darker. Well, that would be a good candidate for recording an action, and we can now do that with Lumenzia version 11.6 or later and Photoshop 2024. We'll just go up to Window, Actions to pull up the regular Photoshop Actions panel and start recording. For this, I'm thinking I want to target the darker areas of the image and then darken them. So let's go grab a Zone B preview from Lumenzia. And you notice that the step I just took actually got recorded as an action by Photoshop. So it'll be able to play back this Zone B preview later. And now I'm going to go and click for a brightness contrast adjustment, which also got recorded. And then I want to adjust this. I'm going to double click the layer and let's just simply make it darker. And when you tweak sliders like this in Photoshop, it's waiting until you're done. So you need to do something to indicate another step. And an easy way to hack this, if it's the last thing you're doing, is simply just hide the layer. And I'm going to turn off the recording and just get rid of that hide layer step. So that actually recorded that last step of adjusting the layer. Let's go delete what I did. And we can play it back and see how this works. All we need to do is click on our action, hit play. And it's going to run through all those steps. It just created the zone B preview, loaded as a brightness contrast adjustment, and actually adjusted the layer, giving us this quick and easy result. And as you can imagine, the limits here are really bounded by your creativity. We could have combined this with anything. We could have been working with, say, Nick Color Effects Pro, and we want to target the highlights. Or perhaps you want to do something elaborate with the vignette feature in Lumenzia to tack onto your own actions. It's really whatever you might want it to be with these actions. And if you double click on the right side of the action, you can assign a function key. So I can go and determine that F1 will now run this action. And if you're working with a Wacom tablet or a Stream Deck, you can assign buttons on those products to use these function keys and therefore automate any action you might create or even just single steps within Lumenzia. Let's cancel that. Let's clear that out of this and take a look at some actions I've already pre recorded. So with Lumenzia 11.6, it comes with some pre-recorded actions you can use for demonstration purposes or tweak and adjust on your own. Go to the flyout menu at the top right, go to utilities, and in the top right, you'll see this action recording tools. When you click this, you get this little pop-up dialog with a bunch of extra tools to help you record actions. I'll explain some of these options in a moment, but they may change by the time you watch this video as this is the first release of support for actions, and I'm sure that these features will continue to improve and evolve over time. Let's begin by clicking on Install Sample Actions. You'll see that it installed a whole bunch of actions for me that come with Lumenzia, as well as popping up letting me know how I can get to the tutorials to learn more about all of this. I'm going to say OK. I don't actually have to close this. You can leave this on screen and keep working with Photoshop, but I am going to close it in this case. And let's take a look at some of the different options here. This first one here is an option to warm up the highlights and cool down the shadows. If I go hit Play, it's going to give me an elaborate set of adjustments here, and it's giving me an option to choose what color I use to dodge the highlights. I'm just going to accept the default, and here you can see I'm done, but it very quickly gave me a nice result to warm up highlights and cool down the shadows. And that interactive pop-up, that's something that you can control with Lumenzia. You notice this little dialog here. If I open up the action, these are all the steps in that action, and this particular step for the highlights is set to an interactive mode. If I turn that off, then it will not ask for any input in that step. So I'm going to go and delete that and just play it again to show that when we run it the second time, it just creates the full result. So there's some flexibility in how Lumenzia works. In some cases, you can use this interactive mode to determine whether or not you get some choices while Lumenzia works, or if you just want it to play back exactly the way you recorded it. For this next one, it's going to create zone curves. So I'll just go hit play and it's going to go create all the wide zones and attach them to curves so I can go and work throughout the image here with kind of an Ansel Adams type zone system. And something like zone B probably works well. Let's go open this and drag things down. I can kind of control that contrast down in the shadows a little bit more. And let's go close our groups here. Going a little bit further, I've got this option to boost warm tones. It's going to create a mask for the warm tones of the image and then automatically boost the color. You can see here that it targeted the warmest tones in the image and then give it a little bit of a color boost through this adjustment. And I've got it set at a lower opacity so I can always bump up the result. And if instead you wanted to work with that preview and adjust it, 
Well, you could go and do something like, I've got this preview mode here. When I run this, it's actually creating the targeting for me and then just leaving the preview on screen. So it's what it's done is it's targeted yellows, expanded the range of the slider, and then sub-targeted the lights, the lightest tones here. So at this point, I'm free to adjust the sliders or apply it any way I want. And that's a feature many of you have been asking for is an ability to create your favorite presets and then just bring them back up to create a nice starting point to tweak. So perhaps you want to just dial in the exact amount of red or green targeting in your image. Let's go move on to another example image. In this case, I've got an image that I used in a previous tutorial, which I'll link below, where I use a lookup table that unfortunately is only available on Mac, but we can recreate the same effect by using this cool grade feature. If I just go play this, it's going to give me the color grading I'd want for black and white, and I can just dial in the amount of opacity that I want to get the perfect result for just a slightly cool look to my black and white. And just like before, of course, you could go in here and adjust the color to make the color steps interactive if you want, or any other tweak. So feel free to adjust these actions any way you like. And of course they're flexible after the fact too, because it's creating the same Lumencia steps. So this blend if light zero is adjustable. I can go and tweak, for example, the lights targeting it. So now it's a blend if lights two. And of course we can paint on our layer mask and there's an infinite number of ways you could customize these various results. Closing that and stepping to get another example. I've got a couple of images here. I'll say that when I work with my images, I normally want to have them pre-blended, load up a lights to and select my brush. And I'm just going to show, I'm going to select another tool. See that when we go run this pre-blend step here, it's going to do all that. It's going to run the pre-blend. It's sorted. It's masked. It's got a lights two ready to go, but we could go and tweak to a different value like lights three if we want. And it loaded up our brush. So I could literally find my favorite setting for this, hit selection and start brushing right on the mask. Or let's say we want to use this lift shadows feature, which is actually going to create a subtracted mask. So it's going to take a darks three and subtract out a darks six and a half and then help boost the shadows in the image. So when I go run this, see it takes just a moment to kind of generate the various previews. And now we've got this shadow adjustment and we could do something like make this mask active and then start brushing on it to selectively reveal whatever we may want in that image. And I can maybe fade that back with the basic slider a little bit and get some kind of a custom result. So that should give you a few different creative ideas to work with and start playing with. The next thing I want to show are these next couple of uh, actions here are a bit unique and that they incrementally will adjust a dark midtone or lights preview. So let's say in Lumenzia, I go click on a lights preview and I want to assign a keyboard shortcut or perhaps a button on my stream deck where every time I click on F14 or F13, I can start cycling through. You can see I'm making this image darker and lighter and my mouse is nowhere near Lumenzia. I'm just using my keyboard now to cycle through. And if you look at the slider here, that's what I'm moving with the keyboard. So these adjustments here are a special feature that lets you darken or lighten this. And of course you can work with this as is, but if you go back into the utilities, into the action recording tools, you'll see here this adjust DML precision slider. By clicking on these when you're recording, you'll actually record the offset you choose here. So let's say we want to make this a little bit different. Instead of the plus a quarter step, let's go delete that and let's make this plus a full step. So I'm going to start recording. And when I hit the plus one, that now gets recorded as a plus one step. So now when I go play this back, now I'm gonna be jumping in full increments of one at a time. So I can kind of use my minus one quarter, but I'm going plus one because of the way I've recorded this now. So just a handy way to use some keyboard shortcuts to help automate some of the more common things you might do. In addition to all this, when you're recording, you can get the option to rename the panel actions while you're recording. So if I turn this on, Let's say I go and create a, let's start recording and let's say I go create a lights preview. Well, it's popping with the default name, but I can rename this to be whatever I want it to be. So it could just be Greg's preview instead. And when I say, okay, the effect it has is it changes the name that gets recorded with the action. So it just gives you a way to customize your results a little bit more. So it just gives you an option to label the actions in a way that makes the most sense to you. Next up, 
it often helps to select the top layer in the image or the topmost visible layer. And then if you're brushing on the image, you can choose to record Photoshop tools like the brush, eraser, or clone stamp, which normally would not show up as steps in here. But if I go now and use a brush, that will get recorded as a step that I can play back. And you have the option to choose whether or not it's going to use absolute positioning based on the top left coordinates of the image or relative, which is probably the best choice so that it becomes resolution independent. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording and show now that we can use button mode if we want to see all our various actions as buttons. If we go and just kind of clean up the results down here, if I wanted to go run something like that, lift shadows, well, now I can just click it as a button and run that. So that's just a nice, quick and easy way to work with actions. And you can always turn that off anytime you need to keep editing things. If you click on action options, it'll pull up the option to change your function keys or perhaps assign a different color. So if I go put something like green, next time I go back to button mode, that'll now be green. So that's a quick overview of action recording in Lumenzia. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so please comment below. And now click to watch this next video.